100 million dollars why am i not worth 100 million dollars in this video i'm going to talk about it what i'm going to do about it and what you could do about it if that's your goal if not that's okay but i'm going to go over some learning lessons that i've had along the way what we could do next to actually achieve this stuff <laughs> So if you don't know who I am, I'm Rob Lufe. Um, I'm a wholesaler, real estate investor. I've been doing it for about eight years. Flipped almost a thousand homes at this point and um, have a team, build wealth, have Airbnb properties, rentals, all sorts of things. Uh, I don't have all the answers, but when it comes to real, invest, real estate investing, I do have a lot of them. Now, in the topic at hand in this video is the big audacious goal of a hundred million bucks. And I know some people's goals to be worth a hundred billion, but I think this video is really intended so you can see what are the mistakes that I have made, what I have like self actualized and self realized along the way of getting to that journey. Cause that is one of my goals. That's not my only goal, but it's one of my goals. And I want to do it sooner than later. So I'm always reflecting um, week after week, month after month. What am I not doing? Um, although that's not the best question to ask. I once in a while do ask that or what have I feel I've done incorrectly? Or what is something I can improve upon? So, what is the number one reason I feel that I am not worth $100 million yet? I'm 29 years old. Um, I will, I, I, you know, I don't know my exact net worth, but it's well over seven figures. Let's call it that. I'm not at eight figures yet, but it's well over seven figures. It's in the multiple seven figures. And although I'm happy with what I've accomplished, um, I am also happy to realize that I don't know all the answers. And I just try to think through this and maybe this will help for you. So, so the number one thing that I have kind of scene of why I'm not worth that much is that I haven't invested my money and my time in the most valuable skills possible. So to be able to be worth a hundred million dollars, you either need to a either have a business or an income that is very, very substantial in the tens of millions per year, and then work and save a couple years and be worth a hundred million or be able to um, produce a business or an income and then be able to reinvest that money into people or or um, assets or things like that to then exponent your wealth to $100 million. I feel I've not been great at spending my time and money in the most valuable skills that can get me there the quickest. So what I mean by that is um, I've stayed doing wholesaling real estate for a while, for eight years. It's like wholesaling real estate wasn't that sexy when I started in 2012, 2013. And um, for a while, I've been flipping seven to 10 houses just very consistently. I've been buying rentals. I've been buying long-term rentals. I've been doing some fix and flips every year. I've just been very, very consistent. And I've lived a very great life and I've been able to accumulate a nice wealth at 29 years old. But if I really look back and I think, what could I have done at 21 to be worth hundred million now at 29 is I would have really laser focused on like the really high, high value skills, which is being a CEO, being a great leader, being a great sales leader, sales manager. These are the two skills I think. And also, um, the skill of money management and money investing in people, not only investing in real estate, but investing in people, investing in other businesses, investing in things like that. I didn't really learn that skill until, you know, now is when I'm really, um, I have a CEO coach that I pay $10,000 a month for. Um, I have, uh, you know, a wholesale sales coach that I pay $30,000 a year for. So I'm investing money into these things now. And I have been probably for a year or two, but I probably would have done that at 21 once I got that, that money. So that's one of them. Another thing that's a little bit more hoorah and not as technical is you get what you deserve. So I feel if I look back at 21, I'm 29 now, what could I have done to be worth a hundred million is I could have accepted, I could have stopped accepting less. Like if I had a month that I made less than like, let's say a hundred thousand dollars, I would have, you know, freaked out and pulled my hairs and just not accepted that. Like that is not reality for me. About two years ago, I set that bar at a certain level. And now that's reality for me. But back then I was kind of like, oh shoot, I made 20, I made 50, awesome this month, this is great. Oh cool, I did a flip and I made 80, but all right, next month I made two, you know, 20. You know, and I kind of like let it happen because it was good, right? I came from zero, I had no money. Like I was in my mom's, you know, house in my bedroom, like from a little, you know, Ikea desk in my office, like in my mom's house office type thing, just with a fax machine, just trying to figure out how to make offers and try to buy real estate. And uh, so, you know, when you're from the down looking up and you go from zero to making 20, you know, 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month, 100,000, you're like, shit, I'm doing good. But if you really want to get to the 100 million mark, you have to put yourself in a position that you're looking down at yourself and think of yourself, what would like $100 million you do? What would $100 million me do? Oh, well, I would, 
buy more assets or I would hire more people or I'd invest in this coach, I'd invest in this mentor, I'd invest in this master, whatever. You have to look at it almost from the top down. And I feel like I was just accepting like it from the bottom up for a very long time. And maybe that was good, maybe that was bad, but honestly, I was happy that way. So um, that has since changed since I've matured a little bit. But um, again, I don't have all the answers. I do make mistakes, but these are some of the ones I've learned. And the last but not least of why I'm not worth $100 million yet is not following a detailed plan. So when I asked one of my mentors, who's maybe not worth a hundred million, but pretty close. Okay. Probably maybe he is there. I haven't really asked him the exact figure, but very close. Um, I asked him, I said, what's the difference between someone who achieves a big goal, like a hundred million or a billion dollars. What's the difference between that person and someone who doesn't? And he said a plan, that's it. So obviously there's a little bit of luck involved for, for most things, like maybe for the billion mark, but for the hundred million dollar mark, you could get there without luck and with a really good plan. So, um, I always had, uh, I've always been go with goal setting. I, I do uh, write my goals every day. I set quarterly goals and annual goals, but I never really set a detailed goal for hundred million dollars. Like I didn't sit in a room for four hours, five hours, re, you know, revisit it another week or another day and put it on a spreadsheet, put it on a Google doc and like map it out. And so I didn't do that. Um, and that probably would have been a really good use of my time. But even if I did do that, uh, the point is to follow it and actually say no to things on your calendar, say no to your friends and family, say no to meetings and random things that happen throughout your day, say no to that and just follow the plan. Um, so obviously that is something now that I, uh, I look back, I'm like, damn, that, that's something I probably could have done. Um, overall, I have no regrets. I'm really happy with where I'm at. Um, I have an amazing business. I have great people that uh, work with me and we do millions and millions of dollars a year in revenue and I have a nice rental portfolio and you know, I flip houses and I have a good life. I, you know, I'm going to Mykonos for a couple of weeks. So, you know, it's cool. I'm definitely not where I want to be. I'm not at the hundred million dollar mark. I know I could get there, which is why I make this video. Um, I think it's very important to enjoy the journey, but, um, at the same time, if you do have a big goal, it's nice to reflect on it and think of some of the negative. What I mean by negative is what, what didn't I do? What could have I done? Um, and then just think about it, write it down and, and reflect. So I hope this video helped you. This has kind of helped me just thinking about this frequently and just asking the right questions. You, you get the answers to the questions that you ask. Okay. Tony Robbins says this, um, in his book, what was his book's name? It's a red cover, really good book. So in that book, he, he talks a lot about the questions that you ask or the answers you get. So I'm starting to ask bigger and bigger and more deep questions. And it's been helping me a lot. So I've seen exponential growth this year. And um, in a separate video, I'm going to talk about my real estate plan, um, what has been working this year, what I'm going to do given the market and all this stuff. And um, I'll share some numbers and everything in a separate video. But if you like this and you like what you saw and you want to get, um, if you're interested in wholesaling and you want to get my free script, you want to get a free uh, a copy of the contract we use to get properties under contract, homes for sale. If you want to get a spreadsheet and a bunch of other cool things, you can check out robolufa.com. You click that download now button in your email there's no credit card no nothing just it'll go to you so thank you guys for watching please like subscribe if you like this video and uh, i'll catch you on the next one peace